So this is the Capex that everybody has known for years, the KS120. It's the miter saw that I've been using in my shop for probably going on almost five years now. Now, a few weeks ago, I did a video on the newest Capex from Festival, and that is the KSC60, which is the cordless version of the Capex. In the last video, I did a deep dive covering all of the features on this machine specifically. The result of that video is I had a lot of people requesting if I would do a side-by-side -side comparison of the features on the two so they could see the difference a little bit better. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. Let's get into it. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is the most obvious thing. This is corded and this right here is cordless. I'm sure that's not much of a surprise. The KS120, the corded Capex, uh, this has a brushed motor and the new cordless KSC60 has the EC Tech brushless motor. What does that mean for you? More efficient motor, really helpful for a cordless tool. Next thing I wanna break down is some of the different capacities of the two machines. And from this angle, I think you can probably see this one is substantially larger than this machine. So let's first talk about cut capacity because we have just over 12 inches of cut capacity on this. Guess what? You have the exact same cut capacity on the smaller version, that does not change. When it comes to depth of cut, uh, there's a lot of different um, numbers that this can do. The KS120 is gonna be able to cut your standard four x four, as where the KSC60 um, is not gonna have that capability. KSC60, you're looking at about a two and three eighths, maybe a little bit more cut depth. So honestly, probably good enough for what most people do in their shops. I can't remember the last time I cut a four x four. With the KS120, it does have a special cutting position that will allow it to cut up to four and three quarters thick. And it also allows you to cut some really tall uh, nested position crown molding, I believe just over six inches. With the KS120, you're looking at a roughly 10 inch blade. However, in terms of capacity, it would rival most 12 inch miter saws. And with the KSC60, you're looking at about an eight inch blade. So it's obvious, bigger blade, more capacity. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the dust extraction setup. So this right here has the ability to accept the 27 millimeter hose or the upgraded 36 millimeter hose or even go up to the 50 millimeter hose. However, in this instance, this is just a smooth sleeve and it does move obviously, so you can adjust it to different positions. However, the smaller hose would go inside, the other hoses go over the outside. And with this setup, the way it can be uh, triggered is the tool itself is plugged into the dust extractor and when you turn the miter saw on, it starts the dust extractor. Now with the KSC60, it's a little bit different. You'll notice here, it actually comes with a dust bag. So you don't even necessarily have to have dust collection on site because you have this bag. Now, obviously this is not gonna be as effective as having a dust extractor hooked up to it, but this just twists off and comes off. Then you're able to use uh, your standard hoses on this machine as well. One big difference between this is you can pair these batteries, as long as they are Bluetooth, which the ones that come with the saw are Bluetooth, you can pair them with either any of the backs in your shop to come on automatically, or with one of the new cordless dust extractors. So with this setup, you don't need any power at all to operate because you could do everything cordless. One question I got asked a lot in the last video was would the bag work with the KS120? And the answer is, not really, and the reason for that is because it's a smooth sleeve. You could put it on there and it might stay. The downside to doing it that way is that obviously this doesn't lock in any way, shape, or form. It wasn't made for this specifically. Uh, so the answer to that would be, could you do it? Maybe, should you do it? Probably not, it probably wouldn't be super effective. Next, I wanna go over the bevel capabilities and the miter capabilities, as well as how you go about doing that. And I'll start with the KS120. So in order to make any adjustments, you have to lift this lever on the back. There is also this green dial that allows you to deactivate the positive detent, which we will do, or you can also give it the capacity to go to its full left and right limit. In order to get the full capacity out of the machine, you must remove the fence. And that is the same on both machines. One feature that the KS120 has is it has a spring assist. So it won't just fall down when you tilt it one way or the other. Nice feature. The other thing is you'll notice that this was turning. This is how I can fine tune it and dial it in from the front. Because 
where I'm going is right here. I can just look down and go, okay, I wanna go to 40. I can go here, lock it in place. The max capacity of this machine is 47 degrees to the left and also 47 degrees to the right. So it's the same both left and right. This does have a positive detent for 45. So once I go past 45 and go back, you're gonna hear a click. I'm locked in. In order to relock this, I just simply pull this lever down. For miters, this can go 60 degrees to the right and it can go 50 degrees to the left. So it's not the same both directions, 50 left, 60 right. Now let's look at the capacity of the KSC 60. Again, as I mentioned before, in order for you to get the full capacity, the fence does need to be removed. To loosen the head unit on this to get your different bevel angles, there's this star knob on the back, you loosen that, and then you're able to tilt this. Now there is a positive stop at 90. This green button here, I depress that, it gives me the ability to go to the right. It will automatically stop at 45 to both the right or the left. However, it does have the capacity to go past that. If I go all the way to 45 and I push this button, it'll drop an extra degree, 46 degrees to the right. And if I go all the way back to the other side and depress that button again, it gives me two more degrees, 47 degrees to the left. When I come back up, it'll stop at 90. Once done, I can lock it down in the back and I know I'm at 90. Now for the miter capabilities on this machine, just like the KS120, 60 degrees to the right, only this one, I can go 60 degrees to the left as well. So I have 10 degrees more capacity on this KSC 60. Another great new feature that this has that the KS120 does not is this lever here. And so for me to move this, I have to depress this lever and go left and right. If I just do that, the detents are gonna catch. Well, if I want to really dial this in, I can lift up on this lever, push over to the left, and now I have freedom to go wherever I want without any detents. If I really wanted to fine tune this, I could, because there's no detents that are gonna pull that detent ball back in. To unlock this, it's simply twisting this knob and moving, and then you twist this knob and lock it back down. The KS120 is a little bit different as this is to release your detent and move your machine, and then it locks in place. It does not have the fine tune adjustment like the new KSC 60. And then to lock this down, you simply push down this lever and it is locked. A big question was the difference in weight. So this machine here, the KS 120 is 47 pounds and the KSC 60 is 38 pounds. And that is a significant difference between these two saws. I mean, you can look and see this is substantially larger than this cordless Capex. The next difference between the two machines that I want to discuss is the laser versus the method that's on the KSC 60s. So this has a dual laser line system. Basically everything that is inside of those lasers is what is being cut away. I did put two different species of wood here just for you to see the difference of the laser on the two different species. This is adjustable and does vary depending on where the saw is at the time, but it's pretty easily visible. And the closer you get, the more solid the line becomes. Now let's look at what the KSC 60 has, which is a shadow line. That shadow line is not adjustable and it is just a reflection off of the blade. So that will never change. And one thing that I do like about it is down here in the front, you'll actually see it moves that line also to the front. So the shadow is the kerf of the blade and it's very easily visible on both species of wood. Next, I wanna talk about the height of the fence as you'll see that there is a massive difference between the two. With the KSC 60, you're gonna get a max fence height of 60 millimeters. With the KS 120, you're looking at about 122 millimeters. With the taller fence, it's obviously gonna be better suited for those that cut uh, crown molding in a nested position it will give you much more capacity. Obviously with the lower fence, you're not gonna be able to have that same capacity just because of surface area that you have to work with. But for every other task, this fence is more than tall enough. The blade change is slightly different between the two machines. The KS120 has what's known as the fast fix which I turn that knob just like that. And if this was 
uh, not locked in, now it's locked. So that's all I need to do, it's locked. I can go ahead and change out the blade. And when I'm done, all I have to do is lock that back down and then I have free movement again. The KSC-60 is slightly different. This button right here is your arbor lock. So when I go to change out a blade on this, I'll just tilt it slightly, lock it down. Once I depress this arbor lock and it locks into place, all I have to do now is loosen it and I can let everything go, take it off, replace the blade, and we're good to go. Now for clamping options between the two, there is a difference. This is the clamp that comes with the KS120. As you can see, it's really large, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to have something this big with a new much smaller miter saw. But the way that this operates, you put it in the back backwards, spin it around, and now it cannot come out. And there is a spot on the right, and there is a spot on the left. And the operation could not be easier. You simply push down, lock it in place. Now the KSC-60 comes with one of their standard screw style clamps and there is a slot on both the back for clamping and there is a slot on the front should you choose you wanted to clamp on the front side. Obviously with this style clamp you have the ability to move up and down very quickly and then you simply twist and lock it down. When you're done you can slide it out of the way. Now the difference between the triggers. So really only people that own this saw and get the new saw um, I think would maybe have a difficult time initially getting used to but that's because you're used to one style they both have this ergonomic grip which can be used from either side the left or the right the way this one works is it's in the locked position I cannot go down so a safety is this right here that allows me to go down the only way I will be able to turn it on is by holding the trigger and pressing this button together. Because what that does is that allows the trigger to go all the way, as you just heard there. Now with this saw, slightly different. So you still have your two triggers here, but you'll notice the addition of this button. Now still same ergonomic handle can be used from the left or the right, but this will actually release the head to go up and down as opposed to the trigger itself. What I can't do, so if I push this and I try to push this, it will not actuate. That's what that safety button right here is for. So if I want to start the machine, I have to press depress that safety. Otherwise, nothing happens. Now, if you already have a Capex, or you're looking for something a lot more mobile that you can use on a job site, both of these models actually work on the same exact stand. Only thing that's different is this tray is for the KSC-60. The KS-120 has individual brackets, one that goes on the left and one that goes on the right, and they connect to the underside of the KS-120, and then they still sit on the exact same frame. Now, a few things uh, just to highlight that they do have in common. Uh, one, they both have a dust hood. You'll see this rubber piece right here. It's not quite as stout as the previous one, on the KS120, this is much larger. If I'm being honest, I've actually found the dust collection to be even better on the KSC60 than the KS120, and they're both really good. Both of these do have the trenching feature. That's this knob right here, and what that does is it allows you to dial this in if I needed to do a groove or a dado, and I can make multiple passes back and forth. KS120, same exact feature right here. They both have the angle transfer device stored on the saw itself, the KS120, conveniently located right here on my model. And then on the KSC60, it is located on the back. And the final similarity is they're both awesome miter saws. I mean, they really are. Uh, I've used this multiple times uh, over the past year. Luckily, uh, it's now about to be out for everybody. Um, I've had this for about five years. They're both fantastic. Um, obviously there's some really big benefits to the KSC 60 as in the fact that you don't need power. And I'm glad I thought of that because yeah, I totally forgot to mention the charger. This is the new Festool Duo charger and you can charge two batteries at the same time. And it probably takes maybe 30 minutes to get these things fully charged. And if you already have batteries for Festool products, then you're not going to run out of power. As you can see, there's trade-offs between the two. The KS 120, you're obviously going to get better cut depth because it is a bigger saw, a bigger blade, as where the much smaller saw actually opens up a little bit more opportunities when it comes to different angles 
because this has a higher capacity than the KS120 does. Do you like the laser? Do you like the shadow line? Hopefully this video outlined all of the different features between the two in order to help you make a decision on what's right for you. With that, let's talk about the cost. You're looking at $1,599 for the KS120. You're looking at $999 for the basic. And what that means is it doesn't come with the batteries or the charger. But if you want to get the set, which comes with the battery and the charger, it's $1,298. So $1,298, just like this, as you see it right here, $1,599. This is definitely going to be a great addition for anybody that's out there working on site, wants the portability, wants that power, wants the reliability. It's going to be a, a great miter saw for sure. But to be honest with you, I really think this has a place in a lot of home shops. It has all the capacity that most people are going to need. And if you're like the majority of the people in the United States that are working out of a garage and you might be limited on power, starting to look at battery operated stuff may not be a bad idea. Thanks.